So welcome everyone uh, to our first annual board report on the equity action plan. Uh, you may recall that our equity action plan was approved last year after uh, some consultation work with the University of Pennsylvania and the Delaware Valley Consortium for Equity and Excellence. After a series of interviews were held with students, staff and families, as well as public meetings during the fall of 2021, leading up to the development of this three-year equity action plan. Uh, last year around this time, we set forth an ambitious three-year plan for increasing equitable practices in the district. This plan included annual goals and communication checkpoints. We're very excited to be here tonight to share with you the progress that our district has made over the past year and provide information <clears throat> on our roadmap to the future. So several years ago, our district committed to increasing equity within our district in a strategic and systematic way with um, various goals that were embedded in our equitable practices. Okay. Um, so on this slide, you can see our multicolored tree with the deep roots that represents our commitment and our hopes for equitable practices within our district. Um, we want equity at the root of everything that we do, and we want Springfield to be recognized as a caring community rooted in equitable practices, which is part of our overall mission statement. Um, so you may be asking yourself, how did we get here? Um, and we wanna take a minute to revisit our past because it helps inform us um, into our future and our work here in equitable practices. Um, so many of you will remember back to September 2019, um, before my time period, um, but when the Springfield Township Board of School Directors adopted the equity vision statement. And really this vision statement became the impetus for all of our work. Um, and so during the COVID shutdowns, the district had to pivot our work to better ensure that our students had equitable access to the technology, to their education, um, and also making sure that we were providing access to food, um, sharing our best practices with our staff members through professional development, and then using our clinical support team, um, which we really value here in Springfield Township, to make sure that we were outreaching and connecting with our families. Then in the fall of 2021, uh, we partnered with the DVCEE or the Delaware Valley Consortium for Excellence and Equity. And we undertook a quality review of everything that was going on here in our district. The DVCEE is overseen by the University of Penn. We maintain that partnership through today. Um, and they use their prior research and a lot of best practices that they had cultivated to really help us conduct an audit to find out where we were as a district. And then also to get feedback from our students, our staff members, our community members, all of the stakeholders here in Springfield Township to find out where we wanted to go. And ultimately it's this work that we started in 2021 that led to the equity action plan in January of 2022. Um, and as Dr. Yannacone shared, this was an ambitious three-year plan with a lot of goals and milestones for us to meet along the way. And that was approved in February of 2022. And <laughs> since then, our work has only exploded. Um, from March to October, we've made an increased effort to share the plan and resources with all of our staff members. Um, we've increased our communication throughout um, to our staff, to our families. Um, we've done quarterly newsletters. We've had professional development sessions. We've gone to faculty meetings. We've called separate meetings. Um, we've had team member meetings. Um, there's been a ton of professional development. We've offered a, a lot of resources to our staff that they can access through our flex programs on their own time um, in their building meetings. And all of this work has led us back to where we are tonight and sharing out what we've accomplished through the equity action plan. Okay. 
So while our district has accomplished many of our official equity goals, we also want to celebrate the ways that diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging have been embedded in our everyday culture. And so um, there's no better way to do this than to show you some pictures of things that have been going on around our district. Um, this fall, our multilingual families and our World Cultures Club came together um, to celebrate International Dinner Night. Um, if you weren't there, there were tables of food um, that everyone could try, and it was a really great opportunity for our students and our staff to come together, um, break bread, and to also just, you know, be with one another. We had translators there. Um, families were able to get together. We had clubs that ran activities for the kids. It was a really great Great night. Um, at Erdenheim, we have Spartan Pride Time, um, which I'm sure you've heard about before, but it's a really great way for our students to get together um, and they get to see new and maybe some unfamiliar staff members and build connections with them and other students throughout the building, um, which offers them a unique opportunity to do an activity that they love while also meeting some new people. Last spring, we had an Encanto sing-along that was very well attended. Um, it offered families an opportunity to get together and bond over a movie. We had lots of kids singing and dancing in the aisles, which was great to see. Um, and at our middle school, our students are leading the way in helping new families acclimate to the building. Um, if you attended the middle school orientation night, we had students talk about their shared interests and activities um, so that they were able to share that with the families and get new families coming into the building involved. Our partnership with parent groups has provided families opportunities to learn about diverse books through our read-alouds, and our high school has endless opportunities for kids to participate. Um, I was just over at the high school where over 45 clubs that are all displayed. Every single club has a, their own banner in the hallways so that kids know what they can join um, and just that they're a sense of that greater high school community. So no matter where you turn, our student belonging is on the rise. So year one of the action plan had eight defined goals as part of the plan. The first goal was to adopt and enforce an educational equity policy. On February 15th of last year, the Springfield Township Board of School Directors adopted an official policy that provides key definitions for equity, inclusion, and belonging, and ensures that the district is continuing the momentum of the equity action plan through professional development, hiring practices designed to encourage diverse applicants, and a curriculum that provides, provides for diversity in materials and assessments. We continue to rely on Policy 832 to guide our equity work. Next slide. One of our goals was the identification of a central office administrator responsible for reviewing and overseeing leadership of the Equity Action Plan. Last spring, we hired Dr. Michelle Lutz as the Director of Support Services, which includes this area of responsibility. Michelle has worked diligently to learn about the amazing students and staff that we have here in the district and to work collaboratively with the buildings to engage in professional development sessions, provide equity resources, and to share out the work of the Equitable Practices Committee on a quarterly basis. Dr. Lutz and I lead the equity team who continue to refine our work to stay current and provide our staff and families with best practices as they relate to equity, inclusion, and belonging. So a plan without consistent and meaningful communication easily fades into the background, as we all probably know. Um, but that's one of the great things about our Equitable Practices Committee is that everyone on that committee is, com is really committed to ensuring that this work not only is taking root um, within our district, but also bringing it back to the building level. So they're asking those questions in those meetings. How can we make this more equitable? How can we make sure our students belong? Um, and really pushing their administrative teams and their faculties there um, to make sure that this is really embedded. With the support of our district administration, including Dr. Anna Cohn, um, all of our buildings and every single department received a presentation on the equity action plan, um, and they were able to hear about the goals and the purpose of this plan. 
And then we also have the quarterly newsletters that we share out with our families across the district. Um, and then within all of that communication work, we've revamped our website. Um, we've updated some of the goals, um, kind of combined some of them, move some of them forward going into the next year that we've seen need continued work. Um, and we've provided resources for families. We try to share with them all of the events that they can get involved in um, and then books so that they're at home reading diverse options, which are all available here in our libraries in Springfield Township. Um, we want to make sure that all of our students have the opportunity to increase their cultural understanding and their empathy. And in addition, our building level professional development opportunities for staff members include a Google Classroom of curated equity resources that is available for flex professional development hours. One of the goals that came out of our teacher feedback was the need for resources and professional development in supporting conversations in the classrooms with students around difficult topics and equity. Um, and while this goal is ongoing and has become embedded in our larger professional development plan, um, we were able to get out and give all of our staff a facilitating difficult conversations um, PD and some resources around how to support students in the classroom. Um, in addition, we also recognized our LGBTQ plus population, and we've made resources available to our staff on being more gender inclusive in their classrooms, and then also working collaboratively with the Office of Teaching and Learning to make sure that our curriculum materials are diverse and support accurate cultural perspectives from a wide variety of backgrounds. Uh, obviously, our work in this area is going to continue in future years of the Equity Action Plan, and we'll share strategies to continue building confidence and trust in our staff to help them, you know, address concerns as they arise. Next slide, please. One of the most important goals of the Equity Action Plan was our ability to hear student voices. Um, and I had the unique privilege of being able to um, meet with members of our administration team with a lot of the affinity groups at the middle and high school to hear their feedback on their school experience. Um, and that was really great because they were able to express freely um, how they felt uh, about a lot of different topics around the school, whether that was participation in clubs and activities, um, their feeling about sports, how, how new students feel about coming into our school. Um, and this is one area, as you can see, that we've noted that we need to make continued growth. We want to keep hearing from our students, um, especially because we took away some really great action items from those conversations. Next slide. So here's some direct quotes that we received from the students. Um, they were really honest and reflective in their feedback. They shared about the great teachers that they have and how most people have a go-to person in the building um, and that the teachers were on the front line of stopping inappropriate verbal behaviors, which was really great for all of us to hear. Uh, students also shared where they felt the curriculum was lacking in diverse perspectives and options, including coursework to learn about conflicts around the world and to learn about the impact of their backgrounds, whether it was race, religion, or ethnicity. For instance, we heard from some families um, and some students that our social studies program doesn't offer anything about the Israeli-Palestine conflict or about the uh, genocide in Africa or South Africa. Um, which was something that um, many of our students expressed with us that they wanted to learn more about. We heard from students that they love the diversity here in Springfield and that they love our focus on social skills. A lot of kids specifically mentioned some of the programs that they've gone through. Um, but that learning right from wrong in school doesn't take away from the fact that students learn hatred at home and that social media helps to perpetuate those beliefs. Um, so we really feel like the students did a great job of pointing out that our schools can only do so much in fighting hatred when there's adults at home um, that don't share the perspective that diversity helps our community um, become stronger. 
So a, a lot of these conversations with the students were really humbling. Um, and we took away as an administrative team, uh, really great information. And we look forward to continuing to engage in those talks. Um, something else that we're also doing to hear more student voices is we've been administering surveys through Panorama, which is an online platform that allows us to compare some of our questions to nationally normed data. And that's been really helpful for us because we've been able to get a better understanding of student perspectives and how we can grow as a district. One of the areas that we received a great deal of feedback about is communication from families in particular during the evaluation process leading up to the EAP. So communication is a large part of the, of the plan. Uh, during year one, we listened to families and learned how to best share important information. Feedback from families has indicated that they often felt overwhelmed by the amount of information we were sending home. So we've moved to weekly e-blasts sent from our individual schools and each week the schools use the same SMORE format to put together an interactive newsletter that focuses on building events, providing community resources, and sharing out district information. Communications from central office administrators are sent through these building-based newsletters to streamline all communications so families only have to look for one thing. SMORE allows our administrative team to view analytics on the information that we send including how many families receive the communication and what links are clicked on. This helps us share information and determine family needs. In addition, our team has dedicated time to updating and clarifying our website so that it's more accessible and useful for families, including making our materials available in a variety of languages for families who speak multiple languages. Most recently, Dr. Johnston completed a curriculum project of updating our K through eight course guides and providing them in multiple languages. In the upcoming months, our nine through 12 course guide will be updated similarly and will reflect similar language accessibility in time for next year's course enrollment. Another year one goal, uh, next slide please, uh, was to create a system for collecting feedback regarding our parent-teacher conference process. A huge thank you to the many families who have participated in our conference surveys during the spring and fall of 2022. In total, we collected over 350 surveys from families about the conference process and made the survey available to families in six different languages. While this feedback was overwhelmingly positive and focused on the great relationships that our teachers have with students, we also learned about the challenges of attending conferences and the length of time provided for individual conferences. Administrators are continuing to review this information as they plan for our spring 2023 conferences. So we greatly, again, appreciate families providing support and feedback through those surveys. So our final goal from year one of the Equity Action Plan was to provide training on equitable practices across our district. Um, and one of the things that we quickly realized was that it was important for our work to spread into the buildings as opposed to having a standalone equitable practices committee. Um, and so that's what we've really focused this year on is making sure that buildings have identified their key people, which were the people who were coming to equitable practices, um, so that they can um, participate in meaningful ways in their building to spread this work and make sure that everything that we do is rooted in equity. Um, to that end, we partnered with our home and school groups and the Multicultural Parents Association so that we're sharing out about our equity action plan at those meetings so that we're also hitting that audience um, and making sure that everyone has an opportunity to hear. We've asked our longtime building equity representatives um, to start shifting into those building um, meetings. And then our dedicated committee members are bringing forth equitable actions at all of their staff meetings and in their buildings um, to make sure that, that that work is really rooted in everything that we're doing. 
Um, and so some of those members are serving on curriculum committees, they're planning professional development, they're sharing out their best practices, they're pointing people in the right direction of where they can ask questions and access resources. Um, in addition, we made sure that our buildings um, either have received or will be receiving in upcoming months the trauma-informed training that's focusing on the premise of trauma-informed strategies um, are just best teaching practices and that they should be utilized in the classroom for all of our students. In other words, we don't have to know that a student has trauma in their background in order to best serve them. And overall, we're proud of the work that we've accomplished during the first year of the Equity Action Plan. And we also recognize that there's still areas for continued growth and improvement. Um, we've spent a lot of time and energy focused on equitable practices and have truly accomplished our year one goals. Next slide, please. So in addition to the plan goals, we've been busy behind the scenes with some other projects. We didn't just stop at the, the bulleted list of goals. And one of those projects was that we worked with our PIMS coordinator to create a district dashboard. Um, those are some screenshots from the actual dashboard that we can access. Um, and this allows our administrative teams to view in real time our student enrollment numbers. And we have a lot of access into information so we can get information by school, grade, race, multilingual, special education um, status. This really helps us better understand disproportionality and it allows us to see how different decisions impact our student population. Um, our goal as we move into year two is to have this data dashboard be utilized to help us better understand and use that disaggregated data to improve student outcomes. Okay, next slide. Um, as a district, we're very pleased that we were asked to present at two different conferences on our equity work here in the district. Um, as a longtime member of DVCEE, this July, a team of administrators presented on student belonging at Springfield Township. Um, we had a, a great turnout to our session where we shared about our four buildings, the goals, successes, and areas for growth within our equity action plan to some of the other member districts and people who attended that conference. And then in December, um, myself and Dr. Yana Cohn were lucky enough to present at the International Q10 Equity and Education Framework Conference. Um, there were attendees from around the globe. Um, many of our staff members also got the opportunity to come to the presentation. Um, and we shared the amazing work that we're doing here in Springfield Township. And we also gave other districts a roadmap for um, how they can get their equity work started. So upcoming in an effort to provide our community with an easy to process format in reporting out on our equity goals, we'll be releasing the equity action plan report card. Um, this report's gonna be shared embedded into the winter quarterly equity newsletter, which will be ready to go um, when we have this presentation so that we can include that as well for anybody who wasn't able to attend tonight. Um, and it's designed to provide digestible information to everyone about all of the goals. There's a pro progress indicator check mark on there with different colors and a narrative of our district's efforts to complete the specified goals. Um, and so this report card will also be posted on that updated equitable practices website. So we would also be remiss if we didn't mention uh, the work the district has done to address our families who identify as living in poverty. In many ways, COVID-19 has expanded our thinking about community supports for our families. We want to recognize that according to our most recent census data, and this was just released in the last few weeks, approximately one in every 4.5 families in our district receives free or reduced lunch due to their reported household income. Overall, since the 2019-2020 school year, our district poverty rate has increased from 19.6% of our families to 22.67% of our families. As part of our equity action plan, we will consider how our district needs to incorporate best practices into our work for honoring families and their financial commitments to our district. We want to recognize that students face financial barriers to participating in activities and feeling a sense of belonging, and we are committed as a team to removing these barriers in feasible and fiscally responsible ways. 
But most importantly, we also want to bring community awareness to the fact that in many of our practices, we are biased towards families who can afford to participate, and we want to actively work to identify and remedy this situation, including in field trips, school supplies, activity fees, and extracurricular events that place cost burdens on some of our families. Next slide. We are very proud to share that we already have a head start on many of our year two goals. So tomorrow starts year two. The district in partnership with Dr. So Sofia Rodriguez has designed an online belonging survey that will be administered to students in grades three through 12, three times per year. This survey will help inform our work on increasing student belonging in the district. Our district continues to navigate the best ways to collect and review data on achievement. We currently use the Linkit system to house and review our collected data and are in the process of identifying systems for overall student data tracking. More information is going to be shared during our spring academic affairs meeting, which is coming up at the end of this month and early in February. As we shared earlier, course overviews are available now in multiple languages for grades K through eight and will soon be available in those same languages in grades nine through 12. As a district, we continue to simplify and focus our communication to families and ensure that our website is accessible for everyone, including those that speak multiple languages. In addition to our goals already in progress, we are looking to work with our established MTSS teams, multi-tiered systems of support teams, to make sure that our systems are accurately identifying and supporting students in needs, academically, socially, behaviorally, and for attendance and mental health concerns. We are continuing our work to diversify and retain great staff members, and we are continuing our goal to improve safety for marginalized students through our work with affinity groups, surveying students and families, and listening sessions. Year two is shaping up to be an exciting one for equitable practices in our district. And finally, I wanna highlight the work of our Erdenheim Elementary School and Principal Dr. McLaurin and Assistant Principal Ms. Mack. They are working with their staff members, leaping into the future and already putting plans in place for year three goals um, of increasing enrichment opportunities at the elementary level for after school participation. Again, this was a year three goal, but Dr. McLaurin and his team did not want to wait. Um, so they have this year seen the addition of the Young Kings Club, which is focused on promoting equity and success for all, GLAM, a girls group focused on leadership and achievement options, and a girls on the run group to support healthy belonging in the community. We're so proud of our efforts and thrilled to offer expanding options and opportunities for our students at Erdenheim. I wanna uh, thank you all for your attention to our Equity Action Plan presentation, which has highlighted the 2022 calendar year. While we recognize the many accomplishments of our district, we also know that there remains much work to be done. However, by continuing to root equitable practices in every aspect of district life, we are confident that our staff, students, and families will help us to make sure that we continue to make progress that is lasting. At this time, uh, we'd like to open up the presentation to any questions from board members. And I wanna publicly thank Dr. Lutz. She has been with us since April. This was quite an undertaking in her first year in Springfield Township, and she has been outstanding. So thank you very much.